A Twilight podcast. Guys, last week we forgot something <laughs> so important. We didn't introduce ourselves. I mean, <laughs> if you don't already know by now. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know me? Do you not know me? Okay, so let's just start this way. Who are you? I'm Kiki. Hi, Kiki. Hi. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jordan. And we are What the Forks, uh, a Twilight book club. I got to say it like that. It's just the only way to do it. Yeah. Um, so that we got that out of the way. <laughs> uh, so this week we are going to be discussing Breaking Dawn. Not, I guess, the movies part two, but we're this is our, our part, part two, two the which is part two. the book part two of Jacob. Jacob. Um, but before we get into that, I just, I know, the big size. <laughs> um, I rolls from here to heaven. I, all, everywhere. <laughs> My first note literally says fucking Jacob. I don't even know what that's in reference to. It, you know, it just fits. Yeah. No matter what, mm-hmm. fucking Jacob fucking is accurate. Jacobs. I know. Um, but before we dive in, there wasn't much, any like Twilight news this week other than like Kristen Stewart jokingly says, yeah, I would do another Twilight movie. She's like, I'm too old, guys. What are you thinking? Um, but also we had a listener comment from last week and we have a new, I iTunes review that I wanted to read and share. So Kiki, would you like to read the iTunes review? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, so this review comes from Redheaded Goddess 98. Hi. I already love it. I already love this name. And it says, it's five stars, by the way. (gasps) Thanks, girl. Man, am I grateful for this podcast. I'm a former Twihard who loves to mock the books and movies. I will never tire of laughing at the ridiculousness. And finally, I have three friends laughing along with me. Sarah, Kiki, and Jordan instantly feel like family. And I can't even remember having this much fun listening to a podcast. Thank you for saying what we've all wanted to say since 2005. Facts. Facts. Thank Yay, you. My only thing you. is that you're never, you're never a former Twihard. Once you're no. in, you're in. Basically. Once a Twihard. It's like a mob. <laughs> That's like saying you're like a former Harry Potter fan. No, or like once a you're former in, you're Backstreet okay. Boy fan. You are always a fan. Yeah. It's KTBSB. a new. KTBSB. I still a. love the Spice Girls. And thank you, Redheaded Goddess. Thank you, Redheaded thank Goddess. Thank you, Redheaded Goddess. We love you. And uh, yeah, girl, you are we, family. You are family. We are family. <laughs> 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 Terrible. <laughs> Twihards with me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we have uh, April Barnett, who is one of our big listeners. Hi, April. I chat with her all the time on Twitter. Um, but she listened to our episode last week, and we uh, made fun of the movie version of the dream when they're on the honeymoon <laughs> where she dreams about them playing chess and she wins, they make out, and then she wakes up crying. And April just says, the whole point, it's not weird because it's a metaphor. And I'm like, yes, yeah. I get that it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. You know, checkmate, I win. Oh, okay. Unless it's a bigger metaphor, April, please let me know. Yeah. Uh, but I well, just like. I mean, it's like on the book it's cover. It's their mind game. It's on the book cover. I think it was another one of those great references to the book cover, like in the first movie, which I hate this moment, but I love this moment where he catches the apple. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it because nobody catches like that, but I love it because, oh, look, it's the book it's cover. The book cover. Oh. It's the book cover. Yeah, they didn't do that for the Eclipse movie, right? There was no, like, rib- broken ribbon or anything? No. Yeah, I don't remember Oh, yeah, I think I remember that's that. that's because so. Eclipse took, like, hella agency. Like, that's we talked about that. It, it did its own Inspired thing. Inspired by. <laughs> Inspired by <laughs> Which, the book Eclipse. Yeah, fair. <laughs> um, and then uh, something we didn't really, we just kind of hinted at it, but I do want to discuss a little bit how Bella got pregnant. Because, you know, we were like, the warm water matters. It does matter. Because it does matter, but we didn't really get into it a little, just a smidge. Who wants to know about this? It's so cringy. Who wants to, who asked this? People. People ask these things. So, I feel like when you have to explain, like, sex to your niece or your nephew, and you're just like, when a man and a woman love each other, they give each other a special hug. A a man's eel likes to enter a woman's cave. But if that man is a vampire, first he has to go swimming in a warm water ocean, Because it warms up his frozen testicles and his frozen sperm. (laughs) Well, that's the whole thing, right? So, like, women, the the female vampires cannot have babies because they're they're frozen in time. Mm -hmm. But men, just like human men, their sperm lives forever. And they can have babies whether they're warmed-up testicle vampires or 100-year-old men. Yeah. Right? 
So, so, so yeah, the warm water, that's the, something you're and this is not us making something up. This is directly from Stephanie Meyer's mouth. Y'all. Yes, it is. 100% straight from her mouth. I don't like, if you don't know, now, you know, she said it <laughs> over a decade ago, guys. Oh. And we're clear now. We're clear. We're clear. So that's what happened. Bella is a human woman who ovulates and can have children. And Edward, Edward swimming. went swimming in warm water and it brought his little boys back to And life. none of them knew because this is not, I mean, vampires just aren't having sex with women regularly. So this right. is not a thing. No, if they do, they're going to eat them anyway. Yeah. So, so like mm-hmm. that's the thing. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's basically that. That was all oh. our like our user fun things and listener combos. So guys, you ready to dive let's into Jacob? Let's, let's get right into Jacob. it. Jacob. Oh, oh Jacob. Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Fucking Jacob. <laughs> Fucking Jacob. I have to say, I do love the chapter titles of this book. <laughs> I was They're gonna hilarious. Say, Jacob's chapter titles, like, they send me. They're so, so good. good. Uh-huh. I don't normally do this, but I think they are good enough that I'm just going to read what they are. So it's like, waiting for the damn fight to start already. Sure as hell didn't see that one coming. Why didn't I just walk away? Oh, right. Because I'm an idiot. The two things at the very top of my things I never want to do. Some people just don't grasp the concept of unwelcome. Good thing I've got a strong stomach. You know things are bad when you feel guilty for being rude to vampires. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Uh, too much information alert. And what do I look like? The Wizard of Oz. You need a brain. You need a heart. Go ahead. Take mine. Take everything I have. And then there are no words for. I just think that they're it's basically hilarious. his diary. <laughs> it's his it is. diary. It's so. Good. It really sets a difference in tone between Bella and Jacob. Absolutely. It's very typical of a teenage boy. Mm-hmm. I, I just love everything about it. I think it's so smart to do that. And just yeah. And it really, the title of each chapter kind of sums up a little bit of his inner monologue for the yes. whole thing yeah. and what you're going to get for the chapter itself. Um, I think, reading, what did I say here? I was like, reading Jacob's perspective, I felt like it wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be. Kind of like no, my, my it reread. Was very entertaining. My reread of New Moon. It wasn't. See, I feel like after hearing from Jacob this time, I never want to hear from him again, but I can't <laughs> wait to hear from Edward. But also, hearing Jacob's inner monologue, like he is literally the douchiest person. Oh, yeah. I don't I mean, need, here's the thing. I loved this section. I do not need a whole book from his perspective. Absolutely no, not. Never again. Never. I don't need all of that. This was entertaining. It's like you you have some friends who in small doses, they're fantastic, but you're like, I could never go on vacation with this person. No. Right. No, it would just never work. Yeah, we could have a great night out at dinner and maybe have some dessert after. Yeah. And that's enough. Mm-hmm. But to spend three days with you, I'm going to strangle you. So yeah. like, I've got great friends, Shout but I could never my, date uh, them. Yeah. I see friends. Oh, I, I love y'all, but y'all wear me thin. My best friend's a Pisces, Molly. You hung oh, out with Molly. Great. Molly, shout great. out to Molly. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Uh, what, uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. He's like a super moody asshole. He knows he's a moody asshole. Like the whole time. Do he's we aware. know his sign, by the way? Because we know that Bella's a Virgo. I mean, does I, it come up? You know, uh, I let me look it I up. I feel like if we knew this information, it would give us so much insight into so much, why he's this. Hold on, I'm going to find it. I'm going to cry. Please say he's a Gemini. Uh, February oh, well. 11. <laughs> no, that's no, just kidding. That is actually uh, that's Jacob Lautner's birthday. I was like, oh, okay. February 11th. That's Taylor Lautner's birthday. Um, just as 15. That um, I don't see anywhere where it gives me a birthday. Damn. Oh, wait, here we go. January 14th. So he's a Capricorn. Yes. He's a oh, Capricorn. Big Capricorn oh, energy. Oh, big Capricorn energy. This is all making sense now. How so. could you not want me? <laughs> yeah. Right? That's I'm so big, great. That's I've made Capricorn up my energy. mind. Yeah. yeah. This is big Capricorn this energy. This is my decision. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now that we know that. Now that we have that, we know a little bit more about him. He knows he's aware of his nonsense. It makes, it doesn't make his actions like forgivable. Like no, I don't forgive him for everything he's bit. done up to this point, no. but it does make him a little bit more likable, kind of like. And I hate even comparing it to this, but this is like the closest thing I can. It would be like Damon Salvatore. He yes. murdered Elena's brother. You know, he's done a lot. Of, or, or like Klaus, who murdered yeah. all the, You know, they're not good characters, but my love could change Damon. But, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they've done horrible things. You get it, but you still kind of like them. I, yeah. I guess. You uh, can sometimes forgive people for being absolute. Yeah. Friends. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I won't date you, but I'll be your friend. Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. Anyway. Sips cocktail, whatever. Um, am I the only one who forgot that Jacob had siblings? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because I had forgotten, I forgot a lot of this book clearly. Oh, I forgot everything. Mm-hmm. So we get to this book and I'm reading it. And even though we had just read the other two books, I'm like, oh shit, Jacob does have sisters. Oh shit. Oh, Paula Prince on one. I forgot everything that happens in this it. book. I was 
like, yeah, Paul yeah. imprinting on Rachel. And I was like, who is that Rachel? Is hysterical. Then, oh, it's so hysterical good. Hysterical with like the chips. And Jacob's like, oh, that better be from your kitchen. You better brought those with you. He's like, don't eat Stop my takis. Stop eating my whole house. Like, <laughs> I get it. Poor he does, he does, I get it. Rolls up and breaks his nose. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, poor Billy Black. He's like... He's like, I'm working on my, like, social security. You know he's only on disability. Right. He's going to feed all these fucking <laughs> werewolves. This poor guy. And you guys are eating me out of house yeah. and home. I can't even go fishing with Charlie because I'm keeping too many secrets from him. It's hard to have a yeah. conversation with this man. As much as I loved that scene, it also, like, it's still, God, imprinting rubs me such the wrong it's way. It's just uncomfortable. And it really continues with this. I'm like, if they really want us to believe that it's not, like, pedophilic in any way, shape, or form, they need to quit referring to them as, like, Paul's now his brother-in-law because aren't they supposed to have a choice? Yeah, yeah it's... Or, mm-hmm. like, it's always love at first sight. If it's love at first sight, that's, like, then Quill is a pedophile. You know yeah, what I mean? Right? Like, it just... And it doesn't get any better. But there is a comment that Bella makes, and we'll get to that. It's in a later chapter yeah. that I really felt kind of helped explain it a little bit from Edward seeing it in some there are There are perspective. shared perspectives that you get through this section that we'll get to later Yeah, that make it make more sense but I still think it's a plot cop out and I'm going to. It really is. Y'all know my position because I railed about it like three episodes ago. I'm going to get to it later when we get further in this chapter. But polyamory would have solved everything. Yeah, girl, (laughs) it would have. You're not wrong. I agree with you. Um, So we jump right in in this chapter and Jacob is broodingly angry as always. Always. And Billy is per usual. Billy, who before has seemed like a caring father, but maybe a little bit hands off, was so sweet. Mm-hmm. In this first chapter, mm-hmm. yeah. such a loving dad. He really was. We just got our baby back. Like she's she's just now home, Jake. Yeah. Like chill. <laughs> you know, you start to understand the sisters. You know, not being home all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jacob's distance. And then we also have the scene where Jacob is down at the beach and he sees Quill with the baby. This is my issue. This is where my issue comes and up. We're talking about imprinting and this and that. But you know, there was a really good point there because Jake found it disgusting too. Yeah. He was like, dude, you don't want to just like date someone. Yeah. Well, Quill says he no longer sees other women. He doesn't see them. They don't exist. They're basically like blank canvases. That's mm-hmm. what? And he's like totally happy being daddy daycare all day for this little girl. But he also says some very key words to Jacob, which is, Jacob, maybe you should get a life. Yeah. And ooh, sick burn. But also, yeah, Jacob. Right. It's go already do happened. Yeah. She married someone. Go do other things. I'm tired of you in this. Go live, live your, your life. life. Jinx. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, like get just move on, but he can't. He can't. It's I. Oof, I don't know. And that whole that line where he is like, I don't see other people, oh, like, really mm-hmm. hit me in a wrong way because I remember yeah. being, I was in an abusive relationship, but that's oh, how I, I felt. Like I don't I see other it. men, and it's like I don't see other men because this a hole has isolated me from the world. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's like, what is this? What happens to those poor girls? Like, yeah. Because I highlighted it because I'm creeped out and I made notes. It's like I just. I don't see anyone that way. I don't notice girls anymore. You know, I don't see their faces. So like, yikes. That's like one. Yikes. That's horrible for those who do the imprinting. And it's so unfair to those who are, they're imprinted on. Because as much as they want to say it's not sexual, they'll be who they are, all want to be. In the end, they're hoping for the, yeah. the relationship. Yeah, it's just, a, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. It's just it was just a really bad yeah. decision of Stephanie Meyer to go that direction, in my oh-so humble opinion. Right. And then Charlie calls. Charlie, like, where's my daughter? <laughs> FYI, my she's daughter's sick. apparently sick with the Rona. She's got, yeah, right? That's all I can think <laughs> about. got the Rona. That is all I can think about when I got to this chapter. Like, you oh, are nobody can Charlie. come over. There's a doctor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, she's got the Rona. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> she's and on a vent, Charlie. She can't talk. <laughs> she cannot. She's got a ventilator. Yeah, and like... Then Jacob's like, well, I'll murder the Cullens. I'll murder Bella if I have to. He's like, Mm -hmm. he assumes that her Rona, her case of the Rona is actually she's been turned. Mm -hmm. Exactly. She's a newborn. That's why she can't see Charlie because she's going to kill him. Yeah. Like she's been turned. Which is the logical conclusion. Because he knew it was going to happen. She and was like, yeah, I'm uh-huh. going to have him turn me. Jake. And and the pack has this whole. Oh, sorry, Ernie, I touched my microphone. Um, <laughs> it was an accident. Um, and this pack, the pack has this whole conversation about like, look, the treaty was written 100 years ago. 
Times have changed. This was her choice. It wasn't like they went out and murdered yeah. someone. She, mm-hmm. You knew this was coming. And I think that that's really important. That it you, is important. That even the pack is willing. It's not so much bend the treaty, but they're act, they're willing to like adjust it. Yes. You, you know, know? Mm-hmm. It, and, it, and it comes up again later, which we'll get to when we mm-hmm. get to the, towards the end of this. But, you know, the pack is willing to to make you know, changes to it and say that, you know, this is a choice that she made. Everybody's got to stand down. You know, this is not a murder situation. This is what she wanted. What we got during Eclipse is the concessions that, hey, we fought on the same team as these people. Like, they're chill. They have nothing against us. They're going to kill bad vampires if they come through. Yeah, we're not homies now. They don't want to do that. You However, know, Seth, Seth and I, little boop, pony dad. Right, you know, like, Seth Jacob is, is in the best feels. He doesn't see it this way. And, no. And, and, and our boy goes off. Yeah. He and goes off. Seth's like, yo, it's not 1894. We do things different now. And he's like, <laughs> I don't care. But I'm in my feels. Um, and then, yeah, Bella made her choice. And so uh, Jacob decides to go investigate. <laughs> and, and he gets there. Whoa, what does he find? And I a like that pregnant like, ass Bella. Yeah, and I like that our first look at Bella though is through Jacob's eyes yes. because I don't honestly with everything that it seems like through his eyes, I didn't want to hear it from her side. No. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to hear her talking about how much pain she's really in and how much she's hiding it no. from everybody. Like I get it. I get that's what's happening. And how much I love the baby. And all I could think about now especially if she's going to go on this whole baby trip is if anybody read the later 50 shades of gray books mm-hmm. where Anastasia Steele gets pregnant and she calls the baby like a a blip or something. Like, I don't remember what she says, but it's so fucking ridiculous. It's bad. I didn't read them, but I thought about making us read them once we're kind of. I read the first one and I read the second one. I think by the third one I had had enough. So I just kind of skimmed through it to see what happened. I've never read them. I've seen the movies except for like. She like calls her pregnant fetus as little squish or something ridiculous. And she refers to it for multiple chapters about the squish and how much she loves the squish or whatever dumb name she has for it. I'm just like, and I, I'm just saying I would not want to hear this from Bella's perspective because it would be more of the same. And it would just be like, I wish he looks like Edward, but has Jacob's this, like, you know, like it would just be, I wish it was both of them. Yeah. Yeah, Right. And how could I see my babies together? (sighs) Yeah. And you just like through him, you see like something is actually really, really long. She's gaunt. She's bruised. She's like sunk it in cheese, thin skin. And he's like, whoa, what's happening? And I really love, Edward takes Jacob outside. And I really love this conversation in the book. I don't like how they did it in the movie. The movie movie was bad. The movie Mm -hmm. was just like, talk to her. And then kill me if she dies. Like that was yeah. like I'm like that wasn't even the point of the conversation. No. So if you were gonna condense the combo for the movie, which I understand, I understand because it is a very long conversation in the book. It spans like a whole chapter. and it's At a least, lot like, of talk between the two of them. Yeah. Like they are actually forming this relationship together. Yes. But that's why I like it because you get to see their relationship and their friendship, and that's one of the reasons that I die on this hill that polyamory would have saved everything. <laughs> because in this chapter, Edward and Jacob do they have this really cute friendship and they do get to a certain point where you know edward even says like hey jacob you may not like me and that's totally fine like i can read your thoughts i know that you hate my guts yeah. but like i actually really like you i think you're a great dude like we could be best friends if things were different to which i'm like just make them different just kiss already <laughs> just kiss each other just yeah, kiss each I, other i wrote down like oh well jake's intuitive now because he yeah. is describing the way that Edward looks, you know, his yeah. eyes mm-hmm. are telling a different story. You know, you can see the fear and the death on him mm-hmm. when he's away from Bella and he's not trying to, he's trying to save face around her. Yeah. Right. He knows she's in pain and he's like, there's nothing I can do about this. And she's made up her mind and we know how Bella is when she makes up her mind. And Jake's like, whoa, whoa. I feel bad for the guy. He looks <laughs> yeah. like... Edward yeah, he has like, to look like he's going through some shit for Jacob to have any sort of empathy. Yeah, because Jacob gives for him no yeah. about anyone. And I'm just like, his face ex- just says it all. And Jacob's like, you know nothing. You need my help. You're asking me to basically <laughs> let you abort the baby and then you'd let me have her and pregnate her. My, like, this and is where we're at. Like the yeah. movie skips over a very important part of this conversation because the bulk of this conversation is Edward saying, listen, if she wants a baby, let's give her a baby. Let's give her a baby that won't kill her. Just go knock my wife up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. And even later when Bella is like artificial insemination and Jacob was like, he did not say 
it that way. <laughs> that is not what he said. That is not what Edward meant. <laughs> Edward would let her have it. Like, Edward would let her get that D. Yeah. yeah. He's like, look, I still want her. So listen, yeah, Jacob, like, I know you want that wet and gushy. Go get it. Get my wife pregnant. Mm-hmm. I don't want to let her, want her to have yeah. this weird vampire and baby. He's like, wow, Edward loves Bella this much. Like, I think. Like this whole time, Jacob then starts warm, warming up to the vampires to the point where he has to like force himself to still hate them, which mm-hmm. I think is kind of fun. Uh, but he's like, man, he loves her so much that he's willing to like let me knock her up. This is real. Like something yeah. is very wrong here. And I, I think that's kind of awesome. I love this particular sentence where he says that they go inside the house and he says it's like the goth version of a bad sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's I, my own personal thing. I yeah. love it. Uh, I, I had one. It was like emergency vampirization. I was like, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is ton when Bella finally does, and Jacob do talk. Jacob goes in. He's like, you know, I don't know why because you'll never. You're not never gonna listen to me. me anyway. There's tons of foreshadowing in this conversation oh, yes. about the imprinting and how like it'll make sense. He's like, because like, what was all the point of this? What was the point of me loving you? I wrote and it down on page him? on page 189. Bella says, more than anyone else, you've got some magic waiting to make things right for you. Mm-hmm. Just. Just beat me over the head with a baseball bat. Why don't you? That's named foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's very heavy. There's a lot of it, especially because like, he, he keeps, you know, with the conversation on the beach with Quill, like with that, Quill, that yeah. whole thing. Go get a life. Do something else. And then like talking with Bella, that thing. And then there's more later with Leah and yeah. everybody. And it's just like, it's coming. If like how yeah. I didn't see it coming. I, that, I remember that I, being a shocker. I, right? I, I was when I sure. first read the book. I highlighted Edward told me once what it was like your imprinting thing. He said it was like a midsummer's night dream, like magic. You'll find who you're really looking for, Jacob. And maybe this will all make sense then. Yeah. Like Yeah. I don't know how I didn't shadowing. Yeah. yeah I was hard. shook the first time I read these books and looking back, I don't know how I was surprised by any of this. I don't either cuz I just <laughs> see it coming. I was like this is a lot. Um I one thing that kind of and maybe this is like like we've said, I remember nothing. I don't know what I read, when I, like when this book came <laughs> out. Times. At this what point, did I read? What multiple I read? times. Uh, because like, why does Bella always see a little boy? Like she dreams of little boys, right? Yeah, and this is the, whole the time. first time. And the whole time she's pregnant, she's dreaming of a boy. And I don't this unless I missed it. That hasn't been explained yet. No, at this point, right? it has not. And a I don't know if we get girl there like later. Bella, who is willing to die for the D, would also probably want to grow the D inside of her. I don't. I don't. You're nasty. <laughs> gross. That's gross. I mean, oh, that's, that's so fun. gross. So I'd be gross. loving gross. I'd be loving dudes, but I still want a little girl who looks and acts like me. Yeah. I want. I want. I want this legacy to continue. I only want boys because I don't want to deal with the girls. Oh, that no. horrible. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin the world. It's As right. someone who grew up with three sisters, like if I had to have a baby, don't want a baby. <laughs> I'd prefer a boy. Oh, I want. I just want one of each. I'm real basic. Just somebody yeah, to I mean, replace me too. and my, I'll take my dudes. I can say little boys stink though, and kids are always right. sticky. Kids always are sticky. Sorry if you have a, a kid out there. Babies like are nothing against children. I mean, if they do, I they am, know it's true. Like, yeah, I'm the world's greatest auntie. Like I, I take yeah. care of the babies, but they're a lot. Kiki, lot of kids. Right, but it's too much. <laughs> they got weird diets. It's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all right. Well, uh, by the, when he finishes talking with Bella, he, Jacob realizes that Edward's whole idea of letting him impregnate her isn't that crazy because Edward has been driven to some sort of madness. Yeah, because mm-hmm. talking with her, he's like, "Wow, I can't. You've been dealing with this for two weeks." Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. She's crazy. She's gonna do whatever it takes to save this baby. This is insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Jacob goes to tell the wolf pack what he's found out. That and, she, they have and they immediately lose their minds. Let's kill this baby. They, to me, in my mind, it was very much like that scene in Beauty and the Beast where they find out that there's a beast and get <laughs> yeah, Stalin is kill like, the beast. kill him. He's gonna make off with your children at night. He's gonna eat everybody. Let's kill him. We gotta go kill him. Kill and the whole the town beast. is. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Man, that's what they should have done for the movie. Because yeah. this is a scene also the movie got really wrong. Yeah, yes. And I understand that it's really hard because some things don't translate to film. But Sam it's does all a the wolves 180. in their heads. And they're all just speaking in wolf form. And, they, and it's on top of each other. Uh, yeah. It's so like. It's really hard. Hard to decipher. We're in a book you can read a lot yeah. of time. Sam does a complete 180, 180 in like two seconds. And he's like, fuck it. Done. We gotta kill the baby, kill the mother, kill everybody. They all he, gotta go. He's assigning everyone yeah. a space. Like, okay, yeah. who do you want to yeah. be? Who is? I wrote it down. Like Jacob blank. and Quill and Embry. You're the ones who are taking on Emmett and Jasper because they're the strongest and the most knowledgeable. And you two, all three of you, are my most powerful. He's like, you guys are going this way. I'm taking down the thing. Uh-huh. And it's like, oh, this is getting real. This is very scary. 
what do we do? And the movie, I think, would have been better if they had slowed it down. You can keep yes. the intensity and just slowed it down and made it a real scene. It very much versus just out. like like that Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> it's like, yeah. whoa! It, it just went from zero to 60. Yeah. But then this is where Jake has changed his mind. Yeah. He's talking to them and they're like, oh, so you're a part of the coven now? And he's like, no, no, no. no, 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 no. I just don't we think just... that we should do any murders, you guys. Yeah, Y'all are I don't want to do murders. We're going to kill murders. innocent people. Why don't we just wait and see what happens? Because they both might die anyway. Right? Let's calm ourselves. We might be committing a lot of murders for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And Sam is very, is very much like, you always choose Bella over your pack and your family, and you're choosing them instead of us. And it's like, he, and then Sam gets so mad, he uses the alpha to freaking yeah. make everybody do it. Yeah, to and, bend to his will. Yeah. And that's when we get Jake. Gets his Lion King moment. Gets his Lion he King climbs King. Pride Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I Jacob, the son of blah, blah, blah. I'm the black, grandson I'm of black. Ethan Black. <laughs> You don't talk to me like that. Yeah, and, and you hear everybody yeah. like feeling his alpha, yeah, like yeah. overpower. Which, like, Sam. as much as I don't like Jacob in theory, I love this moment. This I love great. this moment of him stepping into his power and mm -hmm. him saying, "Listen, you don't talk to me like that." Exactly. This is this is what we not gonna excuse do. Excuse me. This we are gonna force <laughs> people to do things. This is what we bitches. can do, but this is what we not gonna do exactly. today. You gonna learn, Sam. <laughs> I just love that he has this line, and I ha had not been born to kneel to him. Yes. And I'm yeah. like, no, you weren't, Jacob. No, you weren't. <laughs> Go, Jacob. Go, you Jacob. Get, you get yourself, Jacob. Ephra Black son was not born to follow Levi Ulysses. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, yes, you get it. So these are my highlights because I loved it yeah, so it much. So I was like, good. you do this. And I just remember the in the week because I watched the movie again, and I everyone in the theater, I remember watching it the first time, laughed during this whole scene because it's so weird and, and fast. It just, yeah, it wasn't and done like well It wasn't money. done it well be, enough. It should be it wasn't so powerful. powerful. They, and the orchestration should have been really strong behind mm -hmm. it. Like, this could have been a very, like, pivotal, strong scene, and the movie just didn't, it didn't do it justice. Yes, it did not. But yeah. the book, I, I was actually rooting. Jacob bringing up that lineage was dope. Hashtag right? Big Chief Energy. Yeah. <laughs> big, big Chief yes. Energy. That's yes. the name it of this episode. Ernie, write it down. Write it Hashtag down. Big, big Chief Energy. energy. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Jacob did the damn thing in this part in the book. And it's, you did. Yeah. That's big just all there's to Jacob. I gave you props, sir. Yeah. I don't, you know. I you, don't really like and he you, goes, but he I'm goes to run away, this. and Sweet Baby oh, Seth baby follows Seth. him. I just every time I think of Sweet Baby Seth, and in my head I'm seeing our sweet little Boo Boo, boo Stewart, Stewart. Hi, and boo I just hi Boo Boo, hi Boo Boo. Ugh, <sighs> I just love it. Why is Seth the cutest? He's I so just love cute. him. And don't worry, Jake. I got your back. Oh, he's like, he's could you shut up? You're annoying. He's like, I can later, try. <laughs> there's a part later where Edward says, "You're so lucky to have him because he is one of the sweetest." Kindest, yes. most pure minds I've ever seen in my entire life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, you know, I just love that that happens, and I love that Leah eventually joins too, yeah. and they have a really great conversation that I didn't yes. remember at all. All right, let's this whole chapter so, I did, did not I, recall. Oh yeah, I was I just I, think about I, I don't enjoy think you had too long. No, too I far. just said I enjoyed Jake yeah. Edward and Jacob's psychic combo. So whatever happened, he probably just he filled them in. Yeah, I guess they mm -hmm. filled like this is what happened. I broke yeah. off, so that's a thing. So that's a thing. So that's a thing. I'm here yeah. to protect y'all. But again, it goes back to this beautiful friendship that Edward and Jacob are, are building creating. through this chapter yeah. where they're, you know, and they're having mm -hmm. these conversations where Jacob's in his wolf form and Edward can hear him and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without everyone else around. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that Alice too kind of likes having Jacob around. Yeah. Because she's like, you make everything quiet, <laughs> you know, which is probably kind of nice <laughs> yeah. for her because she doesn't get that much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Leah comes and joins Jacob's pack. And I'm just like, can we just like take a minute to talk about their palpable chemistry just right. through the pages can of the book? How I... Also, she joined his pack under the guise that oh, I'm here. Oh, it's so sad. I'm here for my bro. I'm being a good big sister. But I think that and was. I think that was part of it. Mental. I don't think that was a lie. I do think that was part of it. For sure. Part of it was that she did want to watch after her younger brother who ran off. But I mean, the bigger motivation is that I just want to get the fuck away from Sam, Sam. which like. Can you it's just a for a second story? It's like can you for a second ugh. imagine being mentally linked to your ex boyfriend, any one of them, forever, any of your exes. Mm -hmm. You're just mentally linked to them forever, and you have to hear their thoughts, and they have to hear yours, and you hear all of their thoughts, all of their thoughts, but not even just and like you have any no type out. of ex. It was a good relationship they yeah. were in, and then he was just like, yeah. oh. 
I imprinted, sorry, like, we ain't together anymore. I found the love of my life. And you're like, what? I was in love with you. And you're stuck hearing his thoughts and he hearing yours. And I'm sorry, if imprinting isn't about love, then he should have a choice and just want to take care of Emily. Emily Emily and and be be with Leah. Leah, Right? But that's not what this is. Yeah, no. It's garbage. It's garbage. And so, of course... Leah got the downside. Leah's face is also... Or not Leah. Emily. Emily. Her face is all... Anyway, though, Leah took it out, and which I... Is absolutely is, understandable. She's free now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, look, I would take that out. Are you kidding me? She's like, I know you don't want to pack. We can be solo. I just technically have to be a part of your pack. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. We I don't even have don't to be around that. Sam anymore. I just don't want to hear his thoughts. I will stay in my yeah. human form. I'm deuces, you know? Yeah. But I like I love their their chemistry and their banter back and forth. And she also talks to him about getting out, getting yeah. a life, mm-hmm. moving on. And I'm like, you know, some really great relationships start with like two people who don't actually like each other, like Joey and Pacey, right? <laughs> Chandler and, and Monica. And they're, they're two Ali of the only people who can understand each other. And she she does say at one point, like, yeah, yeah. you get on my last nerve, but I can understand where you're coming from, and I am the only person who can. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And but it's also great. I have this fight in my head of them comparing struggles. I do not think that Jake has the right no. to compare oh, no. himself to Leah. No, not even close. never not even close. had Bella. Not even close. He's never been with Bella. Like he was just lusting after someone who was permanently in love with somebody else. Yes. Yes. And then acting like he had his heart broken where Leah actually went through it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, justice for yeah. Leah. Justice Leah for had, Leah. Leah has the shittiest story. First girl right. werewolf has to hear the mind thoughts of her ex. Yeah. Like, no. no. And she, like, this is something I totally forgot about, too. It was like, Leah is now barren. Yeah. yeah. She Which, well, that part will come up later. Yeah, right. but, like, during their combos, we, like, learn about... It's okay, we can jump ahead a little yeah. bit. Another thing, if we're going to jump ahead, you can talk about their chemistry, is that when Jacob says, when they're talking about them being naked and phasing back and forth... <laughs> yeah. And he even <laughs> says... He goes, he goes, it's not like she's bad to look at, but like you just don't want to hear her thinking you like hear her thoughts. Yeah, hear her thoughts later Mm -hmm. when you're thinking about how she's not bad to look at. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Right? I was like, oof. It's like, yeah, girl, we know. Get it. Get it. Yeah, I just Leah. I just feel bad for her. Me too. She deserved justice for Leah. Hashtag. I know. Always will. And then also I think of like, I thought of hair, because you know how like when they describe Leah, she has like She's beautiful, yeah. long, beautiful hair. And then she has to hack off this hair to be a wolf, just like Jake <laughs> cut off his hair. And then I was like, oh my God, I've okay. cut off I my just hair imagine so her times. having she the got perfect that Vidal Vassoon vlog, the vlog. Okay, see, I was imagining her having like a the perfect face to cut off a badass pixie cut. Like, <gasps> yeah. mm. badass pixie cut. She probably rides a motorcycle on the weekends. Like, Leah's, you she's know, badass. Mm-hmm. she's that girl at the bar where you look at her and you're like, do I want to be her or do I want to be with her? I don't, I don't know, know, but I'm going to go talk to her anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about Rihanna. It's hard. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I just to just get kind of get through um, Leah's little storyline, and then we can get back into the colons and stuff. Uh, but uh, she talks about how she's now barren and imprinting. She's like, I'll never imprint because isn't yeah. the whole Sam's idea is the whole point of imprinting is to breed stronger wolves. Yes. Mm-hmm. So is her whole thing is that she's gonna have to give up her wolfdom in order to be with someone? So it's kind of like. I don't know, man. I All I got from that section was that Leah was a great friend, first of all, to people who were not very friendly to her. Yes, ma'am. But then also, like, imprinting is eugenics. Like, I, I don't know. The whole It just made me even more uncomfortable. Because yeah. the idea of it to begin with always made me uncomfortable. And then they want to have this justification that, like, oh, maybe imprinting uh, is so you breed stronger werewolves, like the best possible werewolves. And I'm like, that but is... But it's not about love, right? But it's eugenics, not eugenics, y'all. Love. I don't like any of this. And, I mean, if that's, that's the case, then Sam should have just been with Leah because that would be a stronger yeah, bloodline were, exactly. right, they're with both Emily. Wolves, so they're I, have both wolves. N- I have no clue. And I hate the Leah's idea of making them. her barren. Cause me too. It To me, it came off with some more like weird Mormon puritanical pregnancy is that you're punished if you have sex. I don't know. I don't know. All of it made me uncomfortable. That doesn't register in my pre-Mormon brain. So <laughs> oh, I don't, I, and maybe Post-Mormon I'm. Mormon brain? Sorry. I, don't know, I apologize because I don't want to be like offensive. I was just like, like is she I might have felt like, I went, there's just like some weird. Mormon old ex and I couldn't. Is she trying to say that she's like born in the wrong gender identity and that she's actually a man? Exactly. Like, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. It's some weird punishing I feel if Leah had that going on, she would have known you know did you figure it out I went, oh, well 
in the Mormon religion, women are not allowed to be in power. So if ah. you are powerful, maybe this is their way of punishing powerful women, which is very possible. Oh, uh-huh. see, I knew I knew it tied back somehow. I was like, it's going to come out. I I'm going to get it. it. It's going to come forward. Anyway, I have lots of issues with that. Our, our uh, direct link to Mormonism. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, I got 19 years of it. Um, She's like on Bluetooth to Stephanie Myers. <laughs> uh, okay, so jumping back to the Collins. Okay, I have a really hard time. <laughs> Finish your sentence and I'll read my note. With the idea that they are surrounded by vampires. She is having a half vampire baby. And no one, not a single person, not the doctor in the room, thought, huh, maybe this baby needs blood. So I mean, my direct note, I'm reading this right off of my phone as I wrote it this morning because I didn't finish reading it until this morning. For a doctor, comma, Carlisle is a fucking idiot. <laughs> Reference- <laughs> <laughs> Reference page 235. <laughs> At least you're like, I'm not flipping to yep. it. Yeah. Like, how? How is Jacob the one with a snide comment being like, it's probably Oh, that's a thirsty. good idea. And then Edward's like, I heard Edward's you. Like, Wait a minute. I heard you. Actually. Actually. You maybe right. he's thirsty. Maybe he's got it. He's on to something. Someone get the old nag on ice. I know. And All we- anybody talks about is pregnant women and their cravings and how they want pickles and sandwiches yeah. and whatever. Rare steak. Like- Apparently <laughs> Bella's is eggs. I don't know. I think that's weird. Uh, my mom has a story about how she woke my dad when she was pregnant with my oldest brother at first pregnancy. She woke him up in the middle of the night and was like, go find a lobster. And my dad was like, <laughs> what? And my mom was like, I don't just get up and go. Like, don't come back. Go find one. I don't care where you have to go, but you need to leave this house right now and you can't come back till you have a lobster. That's amazing. My mom yeah. just cried when they got her orders wrong. Like she, <laughs> that, like she hates mustard and oh, she went no. to McDonald's and got I a burger and asked for a mustard. who straight up was like banging on the door of Polly's Pies in Long Beach because they close at, I guess, 10 and he yeah. showed up at 9.58 and they had already locked up and he's like, I got to get a banana cream pie. Oh my God. There's a pregnant woman at home. Open up, Polly. That's so funny. So like, oh this gosh. is a thing. This, this is, is a, a thing. This is a trope for yeah. a reason. It's something that people laugh about for a reason and nobody went no. to like oh pregnancy craving vampire baby blood, blood. not a yeah. single person not even the doctor this not doctor's out doctor. here Carl's out here trying to sequence genomes and talking about like how many <laughs> how many chromosomes do you and the baby have <laughs> he can't figure yeah. out the baby wants blood blood right and i love in the movie i think it's one of my favorite moments is jasper with like carlisle's like oh i've got oneg in the fridge waiting for bella like you know when the thing is and, and freaking jasper's always like excuse me <laughs> there is human blood There's in this house blood in this house you i just love got, that they did that in the movie though because here? when i was reading it in the book all i could think about was like where's jasper Poor Jasper. Yeah. Because they have the scene where she's drinking it. She had the scene where they drop it. Like all these things are happening. And I'm like, where is Jasper? You know, well, you know, you couldn't have given him a little bit of help. Alice was like, come with me. Like takes him out of the yeah. house. Cause she's going to walk. Let's go to walk. But poor Jasper's like being a vegetarian is dumb. Why are we doing this? And I just love that. He's always doing We're that. Saving <laughs> lives. Jasper. But blood banks are a thing. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so the blood smells the, good to Bella. The blood smells good and the blood tastes good. They put it in a cup. I like put it in a little a plastic. Cup, not a clear like cup. Edward yells at her. He's like, not clear. Little, put it in a little plastic cup for yeah. her with a little bendy straw. And she... <laughs> I just imagine Rosalie in the kitchen because, like, you know, she's a homemaker. <laughs> yeah. Putting it in, like, a nice, like, champagne flute with, like, a with little a sprig. Twig, <laughs> yeah. A twist of rosemary. A little sprig of parsley or something. Like, and Edward's like, like no. Or, like, making it like a Bloody Mary. With, yeah. Like, <laughs> with, like, with, like, a celery, celery stick. And Edward's like, in a not a clear cup. And so I just see Rosalie getting mad and, like, switching to a cup with, a, like, a fucking crazy straw in it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like fine. Just a kid's I guess. sippy cup. Ugh, but it works. Bella gets her color back and she yeah. gets a little healthier. But unfortunately, that means the baby also gets yeah. stronger. And the Ed- again, the Edward Jacob dynamic in this part is just so adorable because so Jacob's good. sitting here like, this is so gross. And Edward's like, we're asking you to do something monstrous and repulsive <laughs> and disgusting. <laughs> and like, Jacob is like, like yeah, yeah, you're right. And Edward is like, Bry, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're aware. And I, I just also can I just say how much I love like Jacob and Rosalie's relationship too. He's so constantly jokes. I was saying all blonde 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 jokes, but yes, all the blonde yeah. jokes, and she's like, I've heard that one before. Yeah, I just think it's fun. And like the dog bowl, and like that's uh, what I was saving it for later when we got to that part. Uh, but we yes, still can. Whole, we still can. The Rosalie Jacob is it's really good. <laughs> also, the amount of hissing Rosalie does so at much, Jacob. So much in this chapter, I so much hissing. Died, yeah. It's like and she the, hissed at me. I just imagine. Imagine her like a big house cat on top of That's Bella, like. I think so. Alice does it like this whole chapter to me is just a whole bunch of them going <laughs> <laughs> like cats. 
<laughs> Jellico cats and jellicles do. Uh, <laughs> speaking of cats, um, the wolves come by. The wolves come to talk. And they get come this scene chat. completely wrong in the movie. Uh. Um, but like Sam... Uh, sends Jared to talk and doesn't send, is it Quill or Embry? I can't remember. One of them. Yeah, he doesn't send one of them because there's... He knows he, he would He knows deflect. that the other one would defect, mm-hmm. for sure. It's the one who has it imprinted. Embry. Embry. It's Embry, because he has yeah. no reason to stay. Exactly. Quill will yeah. stay because he's imprinted, but he's like, Embry would, he'd peace out. And how dirty is it that Sam tells Jared to use Leah's nickname <gasps> that he has That made rage. me furious. Rage. I thought that I hated Jacob the Lily? most. And then what? I was like, Sam is the worst character in this entire book series and I will punch him in the face. Yeah. I miss you, Lily. Come home. How dare Excuse you? you? Excuse how you? How dare you? You know what? Why don't you talk to your bitch Emily about right? that? Yeah, Lily exactly. has no home to go to. The She's aud- not near your Lily audacity. anymore. The audacity. If I'm men so have nothing, it. they have the audacity. Right, exactly. <laughs> and Jacob decides to, you know, transform back into human form. So he's just standing there naked, flanked just, by just werewolves. Butt naked. And then, you know, when Leah, he sends Leah out to run away, and Leah's like, I've seen it before. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, he's like, like really? We're don't doing this? Don't be afraid. Yeah. I'm going to stand butt ass naked and talk to you. And he's like, look, I, he's like, I, I want them to leave. I've told them they can. Yeah. They don't want to. What do you want me to do? I am not going to use my alpha powers. No. Mm hmm. So, you know, then he they have naked fist bumps with Embry and they yeah. go away. <laughs> right? I know. And I just imagine Embry's nose like booping a naked Jacob. And I it's was like, right? just that's precious. nasty, but precious. But precious. It's so cute. You know, and then uh, we have this beautiful part where Esme, just ever the loving homemaker the mom. and mother, is just like, it. you know, Edward told me I overheard your conversation about you guys being homeless and you don't have any clothes anymore. Here's some clothes. Here's some food. Mm-hmm. Shower in our house. Sleep in our house. It will be mm-hmm. fine. We're your family now. Mm-hmm. And I just love that he she gives him tan pants and a button down. What is with this family and neutral tomes? They are the worst vampires. Girl, I have you been to ever. a shirt? It's very I basic. Know. It's very basic. I hate it so much. We, they're like the gap. Vampires mm-hmm. don't buy clothes from the gap. Yeah. I, I, no, they're way more fly, but like these ones no. are And I appreciate not. the movie because the, the movie added some taste of luxury. Right? The, yeah, the movie added some basics. flair. Like you're like, you know, he's got on a sweater. Yeah. But that's Gucci, right? Right? That's, that's a Gucci sweater. That yeah. is Gucci. And I also really like that, you know, Jacob beat the smell out of the clothes. <laughs> Against a tree. Have we? Have they said other than sickeningly sweet is what the... Because we know the werewolves smell like he dogs. He said sickeningly sweet. They compare it to bleach a couple of times. Oh. So I mm. don't really know. Like, And I... Then, I it's just, I'm like just like too clean. I was like, then why is it so bad? I understand a wet dog. That, yeah. that smells. Yeah. But I think the bleach comparison works for me because there's a part where like when you first open the bottle of bleach and you're like, oh, that bleach smell. You're like, ooh. And, but the longer it goes on, you're like, oh, oh God. God. Oh, fuck. My <laughs> nose. Oh. And then everybody feel like you also get used to it. No. Yeah. Bleach? I, don't I can't get it. It makes know. my nose run. It's just. She, the girl's got allergies. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then but, uh, Alice and Jacob have this lovely moment, yes. like I spoke about earlier, where she talks to him. And this is also a huge foreshadow moment as well, yes. because Alice can't see the baby, which to me leads into the whole thing of Bella being a shield. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Bella is protecting it. It's not necessarily yeah. that weird stone placenta that it's in, but like, yeah. I'm also I think garbage because really cool. then I was like, you know what? Is this like justifying the abortion? Like it's not a baby until it's full term. I like, there were some weird pro life moments that I had were, here, and maybe oh it was God, me projecting. Pro-life, but pro-life I had some else. weird pro life things in this. Yeah, I don't know, man. There's a, it was a battle of pro choice and pro life. I feel like. Yeah, and the yeah. movie did add a really good scene that is not in the book. I think between Edward and Bella, where he's like, "You chose this without me." Yes, like we are supposed to be a team. You made this choice. He's like, I would never choose to lose you. Mm-hmm. It was very much like uh, Owen and Christina Yang. Sorry, I've oh, been yeah. watching Grey's Anatomy yes, again. Yes, girl. Hey, I'm on season eight hey. right now. I'm so sad that it ended like wrong because of COVID and they didn't finish shooting. I know, right? But yeah, I'm at I'm at Owen and well, a couple days Owen ago, I was Christina. at Owen and Christina yelling about the baby and the abortion. Right. So it's very, mm-hmm. very much same thing as Edward and Bella. But I do think that was a, a very necessary scene to have. Absolutely, because as a couple. This is a decision that they should have made together. This is a married couple. A married so, couple. Yeah, as a married couple, this is a decision that they should have talked about. And mm-hmm. Bella did not do that. No, she did this on her own without even discussing it. She called Rosalie and was like, this is what I'm doing. Like, yeah. There was zero discussion. At least placate Which, him with the discussion. Yeah. I'm, I'm here for the my body, my choice situation. 100%. Yeah. But 
being married, you still owe your partner yeah. that conversation of, hey, yeah, this might kill me. I don't care. Yeah. Are you going to get me, in? It's very or similar not? to if you are in a married couple and you have a terminal illness and you decide, I'm going to refuse treatment, that's something that you should run by your partner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, people are still going to do what they want to do. Yeah. But just have but the you conversation. Just run it by them and be like, hey, yo, I, think, I don't want yeah. it. I think you just owe each other the conversation. Yeah. Regardless mm-hmm. of what your decision is. Um, and I, that's a scene I absolutely loved that they added for the movie because this whole section is from Jer- Jacob's yes. perspective. We would never have gotten that. Yeah. Um, this to get to the pettiness. Are we ready for the pettiness of? Well, Seth comes in the house oh, okay. after Alice's headaches, which mm-hmm. are described yes. because she can't see anything and she's trying so hard to be able to see things mm-hmm. that she's having headaches and that's great to have the wolves around. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Jacob just falls the fuck asleep. He just knocks out during their conversation. Yeah. He wakes like up like a day and a half. He yeah, he falls asleep for a day and a half. I've been that he tired. He wakes up. I have too, girl. Girl. Uh, he wakes up. Seth is in the house eating breakfast, sitting on the couch <laughs> with his besties, the Cullen. Yeah, come on, get, Seth get loves pep, them. Warming up Bella. Seth pep. is really acting oh, like yeah. it's the it's Rona. Dog, you know? and he's acting like it's the Rona and he's bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. So he's like, I don't know why you don't like it here, Jacob. Yeah, this you know, right. this they got house cinnamon rolls. They got cinnamon rolls. They got this big house. All I got to do is sit next to homegirl. Like, and just warm, keep it warm. Keep it warm. This works for me. And I love, like, Jake was like, fine, I'll eat something. And freaking Rosalie bends a bowl into she a dog bowl. She takes a giant bowl. mixing bowl and bends it into a dog bowl and writes Fido on the side. Also the craft, the ingenuity. <laughs> I know. The, you know. Just the sheer wit of how can I, he's been telling these fucking blonde jokes. I've got to mess with so him. So many blonde yeah. jokes. It's how do you so draw a blonde? Oh, so yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But the and pettiness so of funny. Rosalie will never be matched because she did that. You know, she put the wedding dress on to kill yeah. her fiance. Like, she's so she's, good. She's queen petty. You know, yeah. she's petty mayonnaise over here because <laughs> just Jacob says I don't want to eat I don't want Rosalie to poison me and Alice says she would never embarrass Esme that way yeah and Rosalie is like but watch what I will do yeah and Edward he's like I would think you would tell me right and Edward's yeah. like yes yes and then he laughs because he can hear Rosalie thinking I'm gonna make it into a dog bowl he uh-huh. laughs because he knows what's yeah. coming but he's like it's not harmful it's just fun yeah. Uh, it's so and good. And Jake still eats it because yeah. Yeah. it's a big ass steak and some yeah, <laughs> baked potato <laughs> the, the best situation. Part is he throws Those it at her head later. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you got food in my, my hair. <laughs> and it's just so good. I, I just love the the mental image of the just throwing it at her and then hitting the back of her head and the noise that it makes. So <laughs> that like we're little. <laughs> oh, God, I was also so mad good. though because they did it in the movie. But it, it was like same, it no. wasn't the same because it was like a gross looking hot dog. Yeah. And but also he took like a bite of it. Yeah. But also in the movie, they didn't build up to that. There was no yeah. banter there between no, the two of them. Yeah. No jokes. Nothing. Like there was no digs that Jake was taking at Rosalie constantly no. that she had to deal with. It was really all, Rosalie that, just called him dog like once. I really think that Eclipse enough. was the best translation out of the movies. Even But it was like Eclipse inspired a, like, by. Yeah. No, not sorry, not Eclipse, New Moon. New, New Moon. Moon. New Moon is the best one out of, New, Eclipse is the best book. New Moon is the best movie yeah. in the sense that it stuck closest to the source material. Yeah. The mm-hmm. rest of them just kind of like, the first half of the Breaking Dawn movie, that yeah. first hour of part yeah. one yeah. was like pretty good. And then it kind of went, we're just going to do what we want. Yeah. The rest of them took liberties to and in such a way that make it even worse. And I think that's why the Twilight backlash was so bad. Mm-hmm. Because for people who had never read the books and then they just go see the movies. Yeah. It's a not like a Harry missing. Potter situation where like the movies are great and they stand up on their own. Or Lord of the Rings situation where the movies stand on their own aside from the books. These movies do not stand on their own. So you watch them and you're like, oh, this is fucking yeah, garbage. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. You to really enjoy the movies, you have to know what's going on in the books because the movies leave so much out. Yeah, when I'm talking to people on Twitter about it, they're like, "Team Jacob." I'm like, "How he assaults her?" They're like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "Yeah, read, oh, the, you book. Didn't read the book." I'm like, I, "That makes me so mad that they washed him a little bit." Um, so Jake anyway. and Bella have their like nice conversation, and Jacob makes again making her answer the hard questions. Is this before or after the part where? They ask Bella what she's thinking about, and she... Oh, no, no, no. This is this is before. I'll get there. Oh, okay. We'll get there. Uh, but he's like, why is it that you want me here? Why is it you look at me like I'm the best person in the room, like when I walk in the yeah. room? And I think her answer... I know it's an imprint foreshadowing answer, yeah. but I think her answer stands on its own, that he completes her family. She, he is one of her best friends. Why shouldn't yeah. she be excited to see him? Mm-hmm. And then later, it's, you know, because of the baby, and yeah. I think that's dumb. But on its own, it's a good answer. On its own, it's a good answer. And I mean, if you really think about it, they have grown up together. She's Mm -hmm. known him since she was a child coming to Mm -hmm. visit her father in Forks. Like, Mm -hmm. he is part of her family. Yeah. 
And she doesn't have a big family. Yeah. You know, that's clear. We never hear Charlie talk about cousins, cousins or siblings. Or siblings or, or grandparents. Yeah. Same with her mother. Yeah. So it's literally, she has her mom and dad. Yeah. And it's just her, only child. Divorced family. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they, Edward gets his Google on and they've been researching how this baby is going to come out. It's going to bite its way out. It's going to eat its way out. It's it's Carlisle who's doing research. Because they don't know anything about it. They don't know anything. They're all, they're all Googling, trying to figure it out. And And they're they're just like, it's going to, it's going to do what? It's going to do what? Mm, yeah, and we didn't mm-mm. hear from Jasper, right? Because they said Jasper was Jasper was, was helping like in the off Googling team, doing like yeah, research. He's off doing research. He's yeah. just out of the house so he doesn't get a, them blood bags. Yeah, mm-hmm. those yeah, are not like, for him. He knows they're there, and he's like, mm, I can't find the temptation. Yeah. What if I or just Jasper, have one just of a snack? Just packs. a sip. No one will know. <laughs> yeah, no one will know it's missing. He's just and like, like when your mom's like, <laughs> don't eat these. These yeah. are mine. And you're like, would she get mad if I had right. one? Yeah. Would That's she like when know? your roommate has really good leftovers and you're like, mm. yeah, <laughs> um, I'm about to start talking about like driving when you're angry. But what would you what did you want to jump into? I saw on page three twenty five. Is that before or after the drive? I, don't I think know. it's I think it's after. Is it after? So okay, after the drive. Like why it is, is it after the drive? It's just a funny little. Yeah, like Jacob gets upset and he's like, "My heart is so broken," and he like Edward throws the keys to him so he can go on an angry drive. Yeah. Why is it that men uh, like to go an out Ashton and drive angry? Martin That's very dangerous. Vanquish. Yeah. And I would just like to point out why no. in the movies do we never get to see all the cars these people have? This is actually, the so this one. is actually before. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Okay, go so ahead. So it's before. Because the whole reason that Jacob goes on this angry drive is because he no longer has an ally in Edward. Right. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, he loses the baby. Edward he can and hear can so, the baby. So here's the thing. I'm going to so, skip a big part, y'all. y'all sorry. I'm a big part. So Edward, they're all sitting there watching TV, doing their thing, you know, having a nice little family moment. Yeah. And Edward goes, what, it, what? what are you thinking? What? And this is what I wrote down because it's so funny. Bella is thinking about that wet and gushy. <laughs> because he says what are you thinking about and she goes oh Isle Esme and the feathers <laughs> she's like I'm embarrassed sorry That's and so Jacob cute. was like oh it sounds like nonsense to me and it's a really nice easter egg for us readers because we're like oh she think about getting busy oh, she's like when I get out of this right when I'm done being pregnant it's me and you bud mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that oh, Bella's so dirty and I love it wow. but Edward hears the baby and that's when Edward has his all, like a turn of yeah maybe we we'll make it out of this i'm a daddy now we find out that bella's been calling the baby ej, EJ. in her mind because she wants it to be edward jr she thinks it's a little boy mm-hmm. um, edward jacob edward oh edward jacob you're right it's edward jacob but no. edward because like edward's a second and then his father like yeah, it would yeah, go yeah, down yeah. the line mm-hmm. yeah so she's been calling the baby ej because she wants to call it edward jacob which again polyamory would have solved everything because you're naming your baby after your husband and your boyfriend. This is fucking weird unless you guys exactly. are in a thru- Unless you're <laughs> in a thruple, thru- this is just weird as fuck. Um, or or Renesme, which again, just call the goddamn baby Carly. Name it after your fathers because yes. Carly is, you know, just a gem of a person that we don't deserve. I Why, know. Why did she not go that direction? Carly, Carly Charlie, Charlie just Carly. mushes together easy. Carly, no, no been, you have to go the so hard good. way. I didn't think of that. You have to go the hard way and call it Renesme. For, because it's unique. Because it's unique. And Listen, dumb. It's already it's terrible. It's already half vampire, half human. That's unique enough. Exactly. Just name the fucking baby unique if that's what you want to do. You dumb. Yeah. Oh, oh, and something gosh. else the movie adds that doesn't exist is um, they turn a thought that because Edward and Jacob have a conversation like, well, what is what is she gonna do? Like, what's the new plan if she dies or if she gets turned? And Edward's like, well, she's thinking that we can have this baby and then we'd go to Switzerland and we'd like lie to her father yeah. and. In the movie, it has she has that conversation with her dad yeah. and saying, like, I'm, I'm doing better, blah, 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 when really the only conversation she has is letting Charlie know that she's alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She is feeling better. And yes. that's kind of the end of it. And I'm like, why are you adding this extra layer movie that doesn't need to yeah, exist? No. Yeah. They have a conversation in the book, but it's really just like, well, you're still lying to Charlie and this is going to break his heart later, but it's not. Yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. she There's has this weird plan. Yeah. You know, and that's she's trying to it. solve yeah. it on her own. Yeah. And that's big of her because she made these decisions. She made her bed and she is lying in it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm going to think my way out of this. I have nothing else to do. So then Jacob and the Aston Martin. Yeah, he goes off on Lizzie. He goes off on his like angry drive. Yeah, meets this cute girl named Lizzie. She sounded adorable. She's adorable. And she is throwing herself. Throwing. She's like, I know cars. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cute as shit. I'm I'm cute. cute. Take my number. You're cute. Take my number. We'll talk about it. And he's like, I just can't do it. I'm a masochist too. You know, like yeah. throw the bang. Right. That's what I bang, my emo bang. 
Um, yeah, and he comes back and Bella breaks her back and not in a good well, way. A conversation shit. that I want to see that we don't get to see because we're in Jacob's perspective oh, mm-hmm. is that Leah goes into the house and she rips Bella oh, a, she new rips one. Her a new oh, one. Oh, yeah, we did not get to see that. We only hear I about really that. I really want to see this conversation because mm-hmm. Leah goes in and she just apparently... It's so Let's bad. It rip. It's so bad that Edward meets Jacob outside and is like, you need to do something about her because if you do not, I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's all about how much guilt, like you're dragging him along. You keep him tied around yeah. your finger. You need to let him go. It's not fair. You're hurting him. Like, what are you doing to this poor boy? Because hello, Leah's actually been through she it. She knows what it feels she like. She knows what it feels like. Jacob is like Leah light. And yeah. she's just furious because... She they cares. Can, she yeah. cares, you know? She hears all of his thoughts. Yeah. It's, I think it's a beautiful moment, and it's really showing how yeah. mature Leah is. Because even though, you know, her and Jacob are not the best of friends, she still cares about him enough mm-hmm. yeah. to put her neck out there and go cuss out Bella. She cares about him, obviously, more than she lets on. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, she wouldn't have done that. Yeah. It was great. And I think that's great. And then, uh, and then uh, you break know, in the back and the back Edward the bed. basically says, uh, listen, we got uh, we got this treaty. You're the only person who can uh, nullify it or change its terms. And I need you to do that right the fuck now because this baby is coming. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we need to be able to get blood. We need to eat. We need to like yeah. things need to happen. Yeah, that's right. Because we also talk about how we know how far um, her baby is away. They think it was four and days and it was literally 24 hours. Growing. Yeah two centimeters a day yeah and every Sometimes centimeter more. they're yeah. like equating to a week so bella is 38 weeks pregnant right now mm-hmm. yeah. like y'all need to hunt because you basically have 24 which hours. like they really should have hunted like two days ago because anybody who has been around a pregnant woman knows like that last month is really it, it can come it's at any yeah. time the baby you know? shows up early or late it's never any, on time, any time yeah. between 38 and 40 is like a roll of dice you yeah know? so they should have been planning stuff a lot you know mm-hmm. anyway yeah. So the Cullens go hunt. The the wolves do some recon to make sure it's safe for them to do that. Which is so and cute. while the Cullens are hunting, we get a baby birth. That that back the, gets broken. That back gets broken. That back gets blown out. <laughs> not, not in the way <laughs> not, you not want it. Not the way you want it. <laughs> and Bella is now in labor. And just reading. But talk about an epidural, though. Right. Like, she can't feel nothing now. No, her back. Broke, I just like, loved reading Edward and Jacob as midwives. Like, that was the <laughs> moment of my life. And it starts because Rosalie tries. She goes up there. She has the scalpel. She tries. And the second Bella's blood is out, she just can't. She cannot. She turns. And Jacob sees his moment, and he takes it. He slaps the shit out of her. Yeah. Like, against which, the, th- the oh, door frame, yeah. like, out the which door. Which I am not. I am not approving physical violence or domestic violence or no, men no, fighting we are women not. in any way. No. However, Rosalie had it coming. Yeah. <laughs> but like reading how this whole thing goes down, you yeah. Rosalie ready to drink Bella's blood, the cracking of the bones they're yeah. hearing as it's all going on. And then Edward has to eat his way through her body. The first time I read this, I hated it so much. I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever read in my life. I was just like, excuse me? And the I'm like, what are they going to do for this movie? I remember that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, how are they going to film this? And they did a really, I feel like they didn't do a good job, but they didn't do a bad yeah, job. They kinda, it, was, it was best they could do. They best, the best they could, they could do. do for sure. This needs to be redone on HBO. I'm just Yeah, saying. and then it would be like true blood, bloodiness <laughs> yeah. of good times. And like, Ed, like he's like, Gives her the adrenaline shot, like she's yeah. you know OD'd and like of his venom, venom. straight into Which, her heart. How did they milk his venom? Do we ever find that Maybe out? Maybe he just spits in know. a cup. <laughs> All right, I wonder if it was like a snake. You know how they do the jar? <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I'm wondering. Like, how'd they get his venom? I, I don't know. I have questions. It was a lot. Or like it was a lot. you know, it's it was like a, it's just kind of like a, a masturbation situation. It's, I was gonna something. say, is the venom <laughs> only in your mouth? I have yeah. questions. I have questions. But it happened. And then like Jacob's like pumping her heart to keep it moving and like Edward's just biting her entire body and then licking the wounds. It's oddly yeah. sexual. Right. And the and the baby like comes out and like Jacob touches the baby and he's like, why is the baby warm? And yeah. then Edward or Edward hands the baby to Bella and it bites her in the titty. The baby immediately bites Bella in the titty and like mm-hmm. get this baby out of here. <laughs> so then Rosalie comes back because Alice has drug her out of the room at this point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Rosalie comes back and swears that she's trustworthy. They give the baby to Rosalie. They're so, doing all kinds of chest compressions and yeah. craziness. Uh, and Jacob just basically gives up. Yeah, he's yeah. like, she's dead. There's no way. He leaves the room. We don't know what happens. And I just have the horrible mental image where they're like her back, her spine broke, and then her legs are just splayed out crooked. I feel like mm-hmm. that's what it is. Like, 
They made her look very it's, like together with that weird dummy they used yeah, for the movie. Yeah, in the like, movie, but it's not. I feel like it's so much it's more like horrific. Like, he should horrific. have been no. way bloodier. Because just think in about the, the way book, they have like, this this part where they say that like, oh, all the movement was coming from her midsection. She wasn't controlling her body at all. Mm. So this fetus is just like throwing, throwing her its, around. Yeah, yeah. it's like some exorcist shit. Like it knows, like, oh my god, she's dying. I need to get out. Yeah, yeah. like the ah. alien from yeah, the alien. right. Oh, the one that comes it should have been oh, oh, way grosser. Way grosser. But reading it is disgusting. Oh yeah, and it's next level. And then, Ed, like, you don't know if Bella's alive at the end of the Jacob chapters. You don't know any of that. And then he's wandering around. Jacob leaves and he blatantly says, uh, he, in his mind, he says, I am no longer pulled towards her because she's dead. Blah, he blah, no blah. longer feels it. Yeah, 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 yada. He doesn't feel it. And in the first I time I read it. Coming from downstairs, though, from out the door, he's. Right, said. that's what I'm saying. The first time I read it, I was thinking that, oh, he no longer feels, you know, pulled towards her because she's dead. Right. And now, knowing what we know, we're like, oh, no, he's no longer pulled towards her because the fucking fetus is over there yep yeah so he wanders over thinking how he can murder this baby murder the, murder yeah, the entire has, family he has two pages worth of murder dialogue which is <laughs> i'm like okay shocking and he's like stocking up on yeah i'm gonna Rosalie. just gonna and even though we're like she's such in such a trance she won't we're even supposed notice. to think this baby is a monster and hate it too but in my head i'm still just like jacob you are spending two pages talking about murdering a baby i know it's a baby. bro calm yeah. yourself Calm it down. And then he sees it and he's like, Whoosh. it happens. The warmth, the thing, the, the love light of Halo. And I he can has. See a halo, Halo, Halo. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Beyonce. You'll probably never listen to this, but, but we, we love, love you. you. <laughs> And Jacob has imprinted on Renee's May. Bum, fade bum, to bum, black. Fade, fade to, black. to black. Disgusting. Well, I hate but it. Fading to black. Thanks, I hate it. Um, can we take a moment just to discuss the terrifying CGI baby in the movie? <laughs> Like he's stalking up on Rosalie and the then why can't they just part? use a real face? So the funniest thing is that, you know, there's the picture that went viral of the robot that they wanted to use, which right. that one's really, yeah, really, really bad. I low-key want like a portrait tattoo of the really bad Stop one because it. it's so bad. But then they're like, here's the better one that we used in the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's still not good. Not good. It's no. still not good. And I think it's like they CG the little girl who is going to play her later on, her on the baby. Mm -hmm. And and that little girl's going to be uh, in that Black Beauty movie, right? Yes, she oh, plays yeah, yeah, the girl yeah. from Black Beauty. Yeah. The girl I saw like Renesmee. the Disney yeah. Plus previews and I was like, is that Renesmee? That's Renesmee. That's yeah. Renesmee. There were just other ways to do this from a technical standpoint. <laughs> They just didn't first of all they could have just used a regular baby yes. number one like you the could baby could have just been a regular kids. infant I secondly they could fast. have had multiple kids if it grows quickly yes uh cgi has definitely advanced in the 10 years since twilight has come out absolutely but still see like the C they did not budget in that cgi <laughs> they, did they not. blew their budget in other places and they could have just taken more money towards like, like the, the best cgi running. like adding random scenes that don't exist because yeah. yeah. what they ended up with was not Oh, like yeah. having a wolf conversation when they could have just done it and right. phasing out to human forms because they already did it in like the second pack yeah. meetup. Yeah, like it the just the was fake just out meetup that wasn't fake out. Fake out they just was, did it for so shits and giggles. Like Dumb. it looks better. Just, yeah, just go I with what looks this good. whole yeah. the whole way that they handled the Renesmee situation. Which first of Very all, the important. Renesmee thing was fucking stupid as a plot point. But secondly. We know. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it was just done so poorly in a film with the combination of yeah. like robots and CGI and a real kid. And I, yeah, I didn't need any of it. And I really feel like the only, and I'm sure we'll get to this in, in our next episode when we talk about the last part. The only reason they had to grow Renesmee so quickly is so it's not creepy that Jacob has imprinted on her. Right. She's going to age rapidly. She's going to age rapidly. So she'll be a teenager in three days and it's not going to be weird anymore. Ugh, it's and gross. she's gonna stop aging. There's at 17, 23, like something. Yeah, know. there's it's a there's a um a meme going around that I I'll have like to share. It. That was something like when Renesmee is actually this, and it won't be weird. And then everyone, it's like 20, 20, 25. It's like their book. So I, I'll share. I don't remember. But overall thoughts, I actually really enjoyed reading yeah, this section. I did too. The chapter titles alone were enough for me to. Yeah, I don't want to admit it, but it wasn't <laughs> bad. <laughs> But awesome. I still don't like Jacob anymore. I'm just, my closing note is that polyamory could have saved all of this. You know it. Could have I saved don't all disagree. of it. Gonna die on that hill. Well, I am gonna die on that hill because Edward and Jacob became friends <laughs> in this okay, chapter. Go, I go out on limbs that I know can't to... hold me and I'm fine Listen, with it. Listen, Edward and Jacob just needed to kiss. <laughs> See how it felt. 
All right. Well, next week we are going to finish off Breaking Dawn. We're going to read the Bella part two. And which gets into the Volturi and all of that all craziness. That. That's and about then to go down. we get to Midnight Sun. Sun. You know Be what? Though? I will say excited. Breaking Dawn was great because there are things that happen this entire book. It is not like Twilight no. or New Moon or even Eclipse, where you have to wait to the last thirty pages to there's get to something no great. This, there's boring. two there's stories, no lying. two stories yeah. being told, and halfway through, which is where we're at. And this is why they split this here for the films, too. Yeah. So now we're getting into part two of, like, here's the chaos, and then here's the bigger chaos. Yeah, right? Here's a problem, and then there's a, another fucking problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I'm excited about. If 2020 so. was a book. <laughs> <laughs> here's a problem, and here's another problem. Breaking exactly. Dawn. <laughs> awesome. Well, ladies, I'll see you next week. All, All right. right. Until then. Fork off. Fork off. Fork off. <laughs> If you want to know what the fork is up, head on over to our Streamer Links page at streamerlinks.com slash smells like teen angst to follow all our personal social media and pages. Yay! We did it! We did it! We're almost done. Now we have nine minutes to get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Cleaning people.